Hello, my name is Keith Trujillo. I'm professor and director of the Office for Training, Research, and Education in the Sciences at California State University, San Marcos. I'm also co-director of the Summer Program in Neuroscience, Ethics, and Survival at the Marine Biological Laboratory in Woods Hole, Massachusetts. I'm here to talk to you about spines. Uh, this is a course, a uh, summer course, focused on scientific excellence, professional development, and lifelong mentoring to increase diversity in the sciences. Now, before I give details about spines, I want to talk about a problem. And this problem has to do with disparities in those performing research at the highest levels in neuroscience and related areas. As we know from many studies, uh, individuals from underrepresented minority groups are severely underrepresented in the sciences. And this is illustrated in this data from the National Science Foundation. You take a look, you can see that individuals who received neuroscience doctorates in 2012 from Hispanic backgrounds, there were only 59 individuals who received those doctorates. In addition, only 33 people from African American or black background received a PhD in neuroscience during that year. And remarkably, there were no individuals from American Indian or Alaska Native background. And this compares to almost 600 individuals from the majority white population. When we take a look at the overall demographics, less than 10% of PhDs in neuroscience went to underrepresented minorities during that year. And this hasn't changed in the subsequent years, and we don't see it changing significantly going forward. Uh, when we uh, look at the U.S. population as a whole, we see greater th than 30% of that population is from these under same underrepresented minority groups. And soon, that population is going to exceed 50% in the, in the United States. So this is a significant disparity that's only going to grow larger as we go forward. And this problem escalates up the academic ladder. As we look to associate professors and professors and those people doing science at the highest levels, we see that less than 5%, significantly less than 5%, are from the same demographic groups. And so we know from a lot of educational research that increased opportunities, mentoring, and professional development will help with this issue. And that's what SPINES is about. SPINES was founded by Dr. Joe Martinez and Dr. James Townsell more than 25 years ago, and so we've got 25 years of success in the program. And we want to acknowledge the important support offered by the National Institute of Mental Health for those 25 years of uh, SPINES course. SPINES is offered at the Marine Biological Laboratory, which is an incredible scientific community located in Cape Cod. It's, uh, you can see from this picture uh, the beautiful setting for the Marine Biological Laboratory. Uh, but that doesn't show the incredible scientific wealth at the Institute. There's more than 56 uh, Nobel laureates who've come through as researchers or uh, course directors or faculty for the courses here at the MBL. 124 Howard Hughes Medical Institute investigators and 241 members of the National Academy of Sciences. So it's an incredible scientific community unrivaled in the world. So getting to spines and what it's about, it's, it goes for four weeks from mid-June to mid-July in the summer. We can offer support to up to 20 students each year, PhD students, postdoctoral fellows, and early career faculty. And it's a full fellowship program. All costs, including travel, housing, and meals at the Marine Biological Laboratory are covered, so students don't need to pay anything out of pocket in order to attend spines. Now, I'm going to go over the curriculum of SPINES, but keep in mind that this is a constantly changing curriculum. We want to keep up with the latest in scientific understanding, the latest in understanding of professional development, and so we change the course constantly. We evolve with the changes in science. So what I'm going to share with you may change tomorrow, but here's what we offer today. So we offer, very importantly, knowledge and skills around professional development, including networking skills. We want our students to take advantage of the incredible networking available here at the Marine Biological Laboratory. And so we offer them some training and, and help in uh, developing their networking skills. We provide a lot of mentoring, and we train the students in effective mentoring. We include uh, sessions on scientific writing, critical reading, and we work with the students to create effective scientific presentations. We also work with students on navigating a scientific career, how to succeed in a career in neuroscience, how to select a postdoc position or a faculty position, and how to obtain grants and fellowships, because these are so important to success in the field. In addition, because of the populations we work with, we discuss diversity issues and we uh, offer a lot of training and, and skills development around that, including health disparities, diversity in science, and succeeding as an underrepresented minority scientist. 
We offer significant work in mentoring and networking, and we have exceptional role models and mentors who come to the course to teach. The majority of the faculty we've selected for SPINES are successful scientists for under, from underrepresented minority groups. We also include a good number of faculty who are not underrepresented minority, but each of these have a strong record in mentoring underrepresented minority students and have even received uh, recognition and awards for their work in the area. Um, students who come to Spines become lifelong members of the Spines family, and we truly believe that this is a family. We work, we work hard to create a family atmosphere for Spines. And so the students, we, we stick with them for uh, their lifelong careers and professional development. In addition, uh, the work that we offer in mentoring supplements and extends the mentoring they receive at their home institution. Uh, when we look at their home institutions, we know that there are very few individuals from underrepresented minority groups there. So the, uh, the mentoring that we can offer from individuals from their own demographic background really helps with their professional development. And then we've recently instituted a formal extended mentoring program. And this extended mentoring program allows us to work with the students after they leave Spines to assure that they don't uh, fall into difficulties as they navigate their way through a scientific career. And of course, as I mentioned earlier, networking is critical and is so essential at the Marine Biological Laboratory. There's unrivaled opportunities for, for networking at the MBL with all of the prominent scientists here. Now, one thing that uh, we take advantage of here at the MBL also is the tremendous neuroscience community that's here. Uh, and so we offer a lot of knowledge development and skills in neuroscience. Uh, despite its name, the Marine Biological Laboratory, there is significant neuroscience that occurs here. There are marine models that have been very important to discovery about the brain, and we take advantage of those marine models and the scientists here that work on them. And so we offer uh, scientific seminars and discussions from the faculty of Spines, and we make sure that our students have the opportunity, opportunity to attend Marine Biological Laboratory seminars and lectures. Now, we also offer lab work to the students. Our current laboratories uh, are the ones that I'm going to talk about here. We have a laboratory uh, using zebrafish for psychiatric discovery. Uh, the zebrafish is an incredible model and increasingly is being used to discover very important information about the brain and about psychiatric disorders. We also have recently instituted uh, a laboratory around MATLAB. MATLAB is a powerful computational tool of significant benefit to neuroscience research. We want to introduce the students to this tool so they can uh, get over the threshold of difficulty and use the tool when they uh, return to their home institutions and uh, return to their research there. And then we offer a wonderful laboratory in human neuroanatomy where students dissect human brains. This has never occurred at the Marine Biological Laboratory, and so it's a wonderful opportunity to the students, many of whom will never have that opportunity elsewhere. Now, we also offer some training and discussion around responsible conduct of research and research ethics. We don't do this because we anticipate problems, but we do it to empower the students. When you're working at the forefront of science, the ethical issues have not all been resolved. And so we want to empower the students to be able to address these issues as they go forward and perhaps become leaders in those discussions. And so we discuss many ethical approaches in research, including the social foundations of science, data acquisition and interpretation, authorship, and uh, how to navigate the, the difficulties of deciding who becomes an author in a scientific paper. We discuss conflict of interest, and we have discussions around how to respond to mis misconduct if you ever come across it in your scientific career. We offer discussions around neuroethics. Now, er neuroethics is a subdivision of bioethics, but it's a very important subdivision of bioethics because the brain is a very special organ. It's the organ of thought and identity and really gives us our sense of self. So people get nervous when people start tinkering with it or looking into it. Uh, new techniques in brain imaging give people the impression that people might be reading their minds, that scientists might be reading their minds. And we have to think about that and think about the implications of that and how individuals might respond to that and how scientists can best deal with it. In addition, there's a new area of cognitive enhancement we have the opportunity through drugs and through other technologies to increase thinking, to improve thinking in individuals. And we have to think about how that's going to affect individuals out of the future and what sort of boundaries we want to uh, apply to that. 
And so we want, to our, we want to empower our students to deal with these very important ethical issues. Now the final thing that we offer at Spines is the Spine Symposium. This is the students' opportunity to present their research to the marine biological community. It's the last thing we offer in the course. It's a full-day symposium, and all of those prominent scientists that we talked about earlier will attend this symposium and see the students work from their home institution. Here's a nice picture of the uh, 2013 course at the end of the symposium in front of Eel Pond on the Marine Biological Laboratory campus. Okay, now we do have fun in the midst of all of that work. One thing I didn't say is that we, uh, we are a boot camp uh, sort of course where we schedule students from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. every day for six days a week. So they've got to find time to do fun around those particular hours. But we're located at Cape Cod and all the wonderful things that are offered there. Uh, the students who come to the course design their own t-shirts, and this occurs for all of the courses at the EMBL. This is the t-shirt from the 2015 Spines cohort. You can see a squid uh, squirting ink in the shape of a brain, and if you look carefully, you can see spines spelled out in the tentacles of the squid. And if we take a look at the back of the t-shirt, you can see the names of the students who attended the course this year and the course directors uh, in the shape of a spinal cord. And then one of the very fun things that we do every year is the 4th of July parade. There's a lot of celebration around the 4th of July. The whole community participates and the entire MBL gets involved. It's a lot of fun. So as I mentioned, we've served a lot of students over the past 25 years. We've had over 300 graduate students, postdoctoral fellows, and early career faculty supported through spines. Many of these have become leaders in brain research and we look toward many others becoming leaders in the future as they attend Spines and uh, move on in their careers. And here's just a sampling of individuals uh, who have come through Spines. There's Dr. Tiran Moore, a professor at Stanford University and also an HHMI investigator. There's Dr. Maria Carrillo, uh, who is a scientific director at the Alzheimer's Association. Dr. Yaquil Quiroz from Massachusetts, Massachusetts General Hospital and Harvard who just recently received the National Institutes of Health Early Independence Award from the director. Dr. Rhonda Zakpasu, who is a professor of physics at Georgetown U University and also a, a professor of pharmacology and physiology. She's using physics to better understand the brain and all of the tools and techniques that go along with that. And then there's uh, Dr. Kevin Jones, a professor at Howard University, who's uh, leading research on the neural circuitry that's involved in psychiatric disorders. So we have an incredible group of individuals who have gone on from spines and become leaders in the field. And so what I'm gonna end with here is some testimonials from spine students who have just completed the course. And they're gonna offer their view about what, what is special about spines and what they've benefited from in attending spines. Thank you very much. When I first got here, I was really anxious. I was gonna be coming to a new place with people that I didn't know. But by the end of the first week here, I knew I made a family. It's really refreshing to, to be at breakfast with people who talk neuroscience with you and who like have the same passions. Not only does it provide a professional development, such as networking and grant writing, it also provides a sense of community. I'm walking away with a strong sense of community and knowing that there are other neuroscientists that have had similar life experiences as mine. It allows me to think about what I want to do for my career, to not only think about it, but to also realize and be encouraged that I can achieve any goal that I set out to achieve. These are going to be people that are, you're going to have for the rest of your lives there to support you, both emotionally and career-wise. And the best part is it's not just with the students, it's also with the mentors. They want to see you succeed and they're going to be there for you every step of the way. It's a very empowering opportunity. It's an opportunity to set yourself up for success. Yeah. <laughs>